Welcome back to the show. Thank you Dr. Anthus for enlightening us about uh, preventing the cancer and telling us information about the vaccines which can prevent the cancer. How about people older than 14 years of age, where can they va get the vaccine and what should be the dose of vaccine for them? Right. So, so the vaccine is given, as I mentioned, to those in grade 7. So for those who are 13 years of age, it's generally two vaccines that are given six months apart. Mm -hmm. Whereas for those that are older, 14 years and older, or for immunocompromised patients, mm -hmm. they get three vaccines over the same six month period of so time. So these vaccines are only for human papilloma virus, HPV virus vaccine. There are no vaccines available for other type of viruses or are they available? Right, there are, there are vaccines for um, hepatitis. Hepatitis virus, hepatitis, yes. Hepatitis, but um, there are no vaccines for HIV, HIV viruses. HIV virus, right. So more information they can get from the Thunder uh, District Health Unit, they can, people can contact and get more information. Right, if, if, patient, if, if, if parents or um, young people have questions, they can contact they the can, health unit. Yes, and, and I think it's very useful all of us get vaccinated and at least prevent one type of cancer, which yes. is HPV and and hepatitis uh, virus which can cause cancer probably. Yes, I think it's very important and I think parents should should have their children Encourage. vaccinated. All the children, all the adults should get vaccinated for HPV and hepatitis at least. Well, the problem with adults being vaccinated for um, HPV is that many adults already, already have, have, a, have, have the infection yeah. and the vaccine is not useful. useful yeah. So it's really useful for our young people, young people before they become exposed to HPV. Correct. Correct. And Correct. Now, can you please tell us about some screening methods which can help us to detect the cancer earlier? Right. So, screening methods, it, it depends on, on, on the type of cancer. We all know that um, mammograms are recommended for women. Mm -hmm. In Canada, it's recommended that mammograms be started at the age of 50. 50, yes. Yes, generally on a yearly basis, although we know in the United States, they often start mammograms at the age of 40. Oh, very and, young, yeah, earlier, yes. yes. And, but it, it does depend on risk factors right? as far as uh, family history yes. and uh, previous family members with breast mm -hmm. cancer regarding right. the uh, screening. Right. Often what we recommend is to have start mammograms 10 years yes. be before first degree relative. Right, right. Is. There are other cancers that um, can be screened, screened for. Like colon cancer can be screened. Right. So so with fecal occult blood testing right. would be the first way to start screening for colon cancer. Yes. And then if that's positive or patient has other risk factors, mm -hmm. to move on to sigmoidoscopies, which mm -hmm. is taking a look into the lower part of the bowel. Right. Or colonoscopies. Right. 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 And uh, cervical cancer can also be screened by cervical smear testing, you know. Right. Pap smears. Pap smear testing. And pap smears are generally recommended starting, starting at the age of 21. Right. With uh, screening done every three years. Right. And it can detect the cancer at very early age and we can treat it and the right. patient can be cured with earlier Right. Detection. That's that's exactly it. The idea is to find these cancers yes. early and to treat them at a very right. early stage and hopefully improve chances of and cure. And man over the 40 or 50 years of age can get PSA done for the prostate cancer? Yes, and that's very important to, to have the, the PSA testing. Just a blood test, right? It's just a blood test. And you and go to the lab and you know if the numbers are up? Right, and so and if, if the numbers are elevated, it may prompt your doctor to do further, further investigations. So what do they do to diagnose the cancer? Once the screening test come positive, what are the further investigations a patient has to undergo? Right. So just because a patient has um, an abnormal screen or even signs or symptoms of the cancer, mm -hmm. that's not enough to diagnose the cancer. Yes. The, uh, the diagnostic test really is a biopsy. Biopsy procedure. So they right. take out the tissue from the body? Right. It's taking a piece of the tissue right. and sending it to, to a lab, lab to be analyzed by somebody such as yourself, a pathologist. <laughs> A pathologist, you know, being a doctor who yeah. diagnoses diseases, yes, yes, such as such as cancer, and then uh, the after biopsy comes, then what is the next step for them? Right. So, I guess we have to look at what does the pathologist tell us. The mm -hmm. pathologist tells us the type of cancer, mm -hmm. where the cancer has come from, mm -hmm. and gives us further information regarding the growth of the cancer, right. th things like that. After the cancer has been established. Um, further tests are done to determine the extent of the extent, cancer. Extent, like CT scan, MRI. 
Right. So we have to determine if the cancer has spread or if the cancer is a localized process. Right. Right. So the patient gets the appropriate treatment. Right. So that's where the staging will take place and right. then that will help to determine the treatment. Right. So what are the treatment options for the patients at this time? Right. So really how can cancer be treated? The three main ways to mm -hmm. treat cancer mm -hmm. uh, that we think about are surgery, radiation and chemotherapy right but there are other ways too yes and um, so we some, can pa touch some on patients those. say that uh, uh, the cancer treatment is worse than the cancer itself is that true no that is not true that that's that, that, that is that is a concern when patients come in with a preconceived idea that they don't want to have treatment right uh, often patients have minimal symptoms because the tumors are so small that they really don't cause symptoms and they're quite surprised by this. Mm -hmm. But it's important that the patient understands the disease process that they have, the options available, and understands that this can translate into cure and a normal life expectancy yes, if yes. they have the treatment that they need. So treatment is not worse than the cancer itself. Treatment can cure patients. So patients treatment should can opt cure for the cancer. patients, but treatment can also cause side effects. Side effects, yes. Can you please let, tell us something about side effects of the chemotherapy, radiotherapy? Right. Okay, well, as we know, chemotherapy is drug treatment given intravenously mm -hmm. to travel to tumors mm -hmm. through the bloodstream. Right. And um, chemotherapy, like radiation, can cause acute side effects and long-term side effects. So mm -hmm. there are the immediate side effects and uh, there are late side effects, common side effects that we all know about nausea. That's yes. a big one. Right. That, but we do have drugs that help with nausea significantly Yes, yes. In, in this day and age. Patients often have loss of appetite, hair yes. loss. Hair loss, yes. 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 That I've seen many times. Right. Oftentimes hair will regrow yes. after cancer treatment. Mm. Patients um, can develop sores in their mouths or mm -hmm. along mucous membranes, diarrhea, these are other things. Common side effects. So patients should not get scared with the side effects because there are treatment available for those side effects. Right. There, there's always treatment available for the side effects and uh, side effects often get better. Right. Although there are some that stay. One of the acute side effects is uh, lowering the immune system by mm -hmm. uh, damaging uh, the blood making cells. Okay. Right. right and right. when this happens, patients have higher risk of infections. Right. Can you please tell us about the new uh, modality of treatments available, uh, like targeted therapy we hear about, and uh, immunotherapy and hormonal therapy available? So can you please tell us what is the difference between chemotherapy and targeted therapy? Right. Targeted therapy um, works by targeting specific genes or proteins, either in the cancer cells or in cells that are related to tumor growth mm -hmm. or cancer growth. Oftentimes, this targeted therapy is given in conjunction with chemotherapy right. to make it a little bit to make it more effective. So, all these modern treatment, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, hormone therapy, they are very specific to each type of cancer. Right. And they increase the survival of the pa patients with the cancer. Right. So, immunotherapy will um, boost the body's immune system to help fight certain cancers. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, hormone therapy is um, also used for certain types of cancer. What comes to mind most commonly is breast, breast cancer, cancer. Correct. and prostate cancer. Correct. And yeah. hormones travel, um, are made by glands in our bodies and right. travel right. to these, um, to various locations where right. they have an effect. And if you block the hormones, or if you give a hormone that will block a receptor on a cell, it will, s it will Stop the growth. Of Stop the, the growth of the cell. That's good. Shrink the tumor. Yeah. And sometimes they're very, very effective with minimal yes. side effects. Thank you, Dr. Anthus. That was very, very useful information. And I'm sure all the viewers will get benefit out of this. Thank you for watching the show, Talk With Your Doc. In our next show, we are going to talk about a variety of different cancers, including prostate cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, and variety of specialists will be here on the show. Thank you so much for watching the show. Talk with your doc. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anthus. You're welcome.